Okay, so I have had a tremendous amount of comments and questions about getting the back of the garment to hang straight because many of us as we age begin to get a rounding to the back and some of us far greater than others. Um, they used to call it a terrible name. I hated the name. It was called Dowager's Hump. And I don't want to refer to my that, so I like the term round, rounded back. So that's usually what you'll see in the pattern grading, the pattern drafting, and alteration books, rounded back. So once you've determined that you have a slight rounding to your back, then... Um, Things don't hang straight in the back. They actually hike up in the center back because there needs to be more fabric to go over that rounding. So here is a muslin in half scale on a dress form and you can see that it hangs straight. What I've done and I, I would encourage you to do this at least one time in muslin for your own body. Once you've created what I'm going to show you how to create is that center back seam shaping that you need, then you could translate that exact same shaping to other patterns. You don't have to do this to absolutely every pattern. So this is straight and what I've done is I've drawn the straight of grain right down the center and then I've done two horizontal lines. This helps me understand if I'm keeping it on the grain or not. So start out with that. If you're making the full cape, you don't have to uh, worry about anything else. I didn't even cut out the little notches for the cuff. I just cut it straight out. So anyway, because all we need to know is how to fit this back. So we'll take this one off of this dress form and we'll put it on this dress form that I have created a... Uh, rounding to the back nothing particularly sophisticated but just to get the point across I mean nobody actually has a <laughs> uh, oval shaped uh, it it's more organic but this is the best I could do with the half scale dress form so I'm going to take the same um, piece and put it on the rounded back to demonstrate now you always want to make sure when you're doing this on yourself or on a dress form that everything lines up. And if you have a true dress form, you're going to have a seam down the center front. You're going to have seams here across the shoulders and down the side as well as down the back and princess seams as well. So you can get everything lined up so you know that it's square on the body. If it's not hanging square, then you know you've got to do something to your pattern. So I'm going to lay this one on here, get it nice. And now we can see it doesn't hang so straight. And it's not going to hang level. It's going to hang shorter in the back. Right? And those of you who have that issue, you already know that's what happens. And that's what's frustrating you. So here is what you're going to do to uh, change the contour of this seam in the back so that it hangs straight again. All right? Is everybody with me? I can't see your faces. I don't see your heads nodding. So in a live class, I know if people are with me. Okay. So what we want to do now is identify the shoulder. So almost to the tip of the shoulder, where is that line? So I'm going to identify that shoulder line. Now, if you had a bodice pattern, you'd be doing this on a sleeveless bottom bodice pattern, and you'd come almost to the arm side, but never all the way. So almost to the arm side, and you're going to identify that mark on both sides. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this is the shoulder, but I don't want to go all the way off the shoulder, just barely to the shoulder. Now I'm going to draw a horizontal line across that shoulder. And I 
in this half scale I come down about an inch and you have to identify how far to come down according to the shape of the body that you're contouring this for it's usually going to start up fairly high so maybe a couple of inches so here I I think I'm going to come down about three quarters on this half scale and I have a straight line between those two shoulder blades. Now what we're going to do, we're going to take a little scrap of fabric because we're going to have to add to this and lay it across that area. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to slit the line that I just cut between the shoulders. Well, actually, between the arm side. Now, we set this back up on here. Let me get that all set up first before. Because it's really important to have everything lined up before you start making this change. And there is a center back line on the dress form, so you want to make sure that center back neckline is right up on there. Now, just to, to figure out how much we need to do this, we're just going to slide this down until it hangs straight. Look at that. I'm going to take a look at it so I make sure you're looking at it. Yeah. So now look at that. That's all we had to do. So this is what's missing. And this is what's going to tell us how to contour that seam. So the way that we do that, it's a good idea to baste your pattern together because you're going to take it back apart. I connected this line the center back all the way up to the neckline. So draw that line in. Now, let me get, let me back up. First of all, I forgot to tell you, you're gonna stitch this. Where's my stitch tool? So pin it right there on the Here. form. Yes, yeah, so you're gonna pin it while it's on the body or the form, and then you'll stitch it in place. Okay. Then you're going to connect this line. Here, oh, here's a pen. I prefer a Sharpie so I really see what I'm doing, but I don't have one at hand. So I'm just going to connect so I know where that cutting line is. Now I'm going to slice this back all the way down that line. So that this is the result of having done this. So we know this fits right. You even want to, after you've done that, is you want to try it back on. And make sure before you go any further, because what you're going to do is you're going to transfer what you've fixed here over to your paper pattern, and then you have it forever. So we're going to make sure that it hangs straight. Okay? So it hangs straight, it hangs level, it looks nice, that's what we wanted. So now we're going to just take the rotary cutter and slice right down that center back line. Top to bottom? Top to bottom, all the way, because now we're going to create a seam in the back. So here is what I have when I do that. Like I said, baste this together so it's easy to pull back apart. Because who needs to be wasting your time stitch ripping something that's just a muslin, okay? So, here's what we have. And now what we want to do is take the pattern. And this was our original back pattern. But what we know is on the original, it's straight and it goes on the fold. Now... When we lay this against here, look how much longer it is. And we know why it's longer, right? Because we need more length because it's going over that rounded part of the body and in order to get it straight. So it automatically makes it longer. But look what else it does. 
it automatically creates this curve to the seam that's unique to the body that you draped it on. So this is unique to you. You can't take a friend who also has a rounded back and say, here, use my pattern, it'll work for you. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. So what we have to do is go about recreating the back pattern piece. So after tracing that back pattern piece out, but leaving some fabric so that I could add the seam allowance. So I added the length, and now, as you can see, I added uh, a seam allowance, and now my pattern curves along this, the length. Okay? Let me get this on the grid so they can really see how much it curves. All right, so here's my stitching line right here. And this is my cut line. And you'll see it kind of creates that little bend, and we don't want that. We just want to make sure our neckline has stayed the right shape and then er, and the length has changed. So now the only thing we have to do, we know our neckline's the same, we've got our new back seam and we've got our new length here, but we're going to come out and make sure we have exactly the same length shoulder seam as we had before we started all of this because it still has to match to the front piece, the shoulder seam. So make sure that that is the case. And all should be well with the exception of you'll have to blend this curve over here to meet the extra length. So let me see if I can demonstrate that really quickly. This would go like this. So this is our original piece. And you see what's happened. It's gotten, let's see, we'll go right there, and then we'll go right here. So it's gotten this much longer. So starting where it makes the most sense, by looking at the shape of this curve, we're just going to come right around and end up down here at our full length. Now, if that sounds like, oh, I can't draw a curve, I'll mess it up, whatever, then just slide this down. And you could follow that curve most of the way around. And then you'll just have a short amount of blending. And if that makes you crazy, just do a dashed line until you get that right looking curve. And that's all there is to it. And now it's going to hang straight on your back and not frustrate you. I know there's questions. No? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> if you have one. Shout it out. Shout it out. Now, I'm going to tell you, you need to not do this on a dress form, and you need to do it on the body, because that's the only thing that's going to be perfectly accurate and give you the correct pattern piece. So, some muslin. I like to use a scrap of some kind of fabric to put in there so I can really see what I'm doing. I think this helps me rather than putting another piece of muslin back there. But whatever works for you, it doesn't matter. But now all this gets translated back to the paper pattern. You make your notes. You want to make a note right here that says adjusted for Mary's uh, pattern or adjusted for Janet's pattern or whoever it is so that it's understood. And then always keep your original because you may want to make it for somebody else. Mary said, remember to add a seam allowance to the back seam. Yeah, I, yep, mm -hmm. right here. We added the seam allowance. And that's up to you. Five-eighths is the max you need. Go half inch. Um, if you're going to want that seam to lay flat, you're going to need a half inch to five-eighths to really make it lay flat. Okay, Ethel says the new neckline isn't clear. The new neckline really doesn't change. So, Ethel, all I want you to do, and I want you to see, I this is our new pattern piece. Okay. And this is our seam line, and this is the seam allowance that we've added. So, it's five, five eighths, let's say, all the way up. So, then when I get here, 
this was my original neckline. I can do it by the muslin or I could do it with the paper pattern piece, but I want you to make sure that that neckline is still gonna be the same length that it was in the original pattern. Otherwise, your collar or your hood's not gonna fit. That's the only thing. Wanna make sure that you did not skew that. And the first time you do pattern alterations, it is so easy to really think you're on track and to make just the slightest little error. So before you go cutting this out um, and make out of some expensive fabric or whatever, either make sure it fits by using a muslin or make sure that you confirmed that all of that is, oh, this is, is this the back? Yes. Um, that that neckline is still the same shape and size. Okay. So this was our original neckline. It goes at an angle because your body is, is uh, requiring that. So it's not gonna sit as straight. So you can't just sit this up there straight. It's gonna have to slide at that little bit of an angle, but make sure that it's still the same neckline. All right, did that help you, Ethel? Just let me know so we make sure. Um, Sandy says, so once you get the neck drawn out, you straighten it out at the shoulders? Yeah, once once you sure this, this should still be straight. You don't have to straighten it out. You're never going to be able to straighten this one out because it's permanently been askewed. Okay, but that's your that's your shoulder seam, and that's your back seam. So um, just leave this alone, but just confirm this is the same shape it originally was by confirming it with the original pattern piece. Makes sense? Because you know you want the collar and the and the hook and or hood to uh, still fit. So we have to keep that same neckline. All right, so Terry says, I don't understand. Is it still cut on the fold for the back after the adjustment? No, we have a seam allowance now. You have got to now, if you want to cover that rounded back and get everything to hang straight, you now must have a seam all the way up the back. So again, here's our original pattern piece we would have cut on this line right here. But we've added our seam allowance because when we get up here, that line isn't straight anymore. So this is almost like taking a dart out here, but you wouldn't want a dart in the center back of your neckline. Um, and it wouldn't quite hang as well anyway. So yes, you're going to have a seam straight up the back. <laughs> That's all I got, but I know we're on a delay, so I just wanted to give everybody mm -hmm. a minute to see if there is... And be sure to, you know, rewind this. You know, all of you, that you can rewind this as many times as you want. And if 10 weeks go by and it's no longer in the news feed where you can find it, just go to the video page, and they're all in chronological order. So you'll be able to rewind this. I, I'm sure I covered absolutely everything, but I know it's a lot of information to take in at once, so you may have missed something. So go back and look at it again. And if you still don't understand it, email me and I'll fill in the pieces.